you are about to hear from Inspirado Projecto. You will never be the same. Welcome, get ready for an extraordinary show. We've got Nina Rubin. This is a third part in a series. Uh, Something tells me this might be a middle part somewhere. And power packed with fun information. Thank you, by the way, Maria Humphreys from Strong Body, Strong Soul for introducing us. Uh, Stick around after Nina Rubin for some other extra special surprises. Some words from Richard Wilson of Mad Shelley Films. Uh, Man Behind the Machine has got something to say. And also, a fun fact from Henry D. Horse. Thanks for tuning in to Inspirato Projecto. People could reach me if they're interested in talking or learning about coaching or just reading my blog or just saying hi at after the on Instagram after defeat. Just A-F-T-E-R-D-E-F-E-A-T. And the same for my website, www.afterdefeat.com. And there people can contact me and um, read my blog, etc. So I would love to hear from people. I am friendly and open and I love to hear new ideas. So that's always really awesome to me. God. Thank you so much for being a guest on the show and for such a high vibrating conversation. This is going to be so great to share with everybody. This has been so fun for me. I just want to thank you for having me on and having such a thorough, fun, light, interesting and introspective conversation. I really like the way you operate and the way you are in the world. It, I can just I love hearing how positive you are and also how how tickled you are with ideas it, it's just it's so pre- it's a, just such a present part of you thank you for saying that thank you you're welcome i just feel like it's all giggles and i like that that's the kind of way that like that those are the people i like are the people who are like open to giggling and then actually do it that's me oh my gosh oh my gosh <laughs> this is good we'll wake up we'll be waking up some more of those those people in their in their hibernation through this exactly yes that'll be fun <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you so much, Nina. And you oh, have a thank great you. day. And, uh, you too. Stay inspired. Sounds good. And you also. Talk bye. to you soon. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. I love, I think it's really cool when we are available to dream. Sometimes we're so exhausted that we're dreaming, but we don't remember. And I, I, I prefer not to, I try not to get to that stage, but you know, I can't always control it or I'll go out late or not get enough sleep. And then I don't have as much, like as much wherewithal. I shouldn't say control, but wherewithal. What, would you say that you dream every night or no? I think we all do. Yeah, I do. But I don't, I, mean, I don't remember awareness. them every night. I mean, in terms of your, oh, okay, no, okay, so I don't have awareness every night. No, but I know I dream every night. I think we, I don't think, I, I, I believe we all do, but no, I don't have a memory of them every night, but I definitely have like periods where I remember them more versus other times. And then I realize, oh, I'm not remembering them as much. So then I tell myself, try to remember. And, <laughs> and like, if, if we, and I tell myself, wake yourself up if you're dreaming and you want to remember this. And I don't always, but I, I, I I can sort of like direct myself. Again, this might sound crazy, but I I think we all can. I think if we have a sense of ourselves, we can do a lot more than we give ourselves credit. We don't try. Mm -hmm. I think when we try, again, it's like perfectionism. And when we try, we can usually get what we want. We just have to set the intention to do it. And then it might not be perfect, but it'll be a start. Because every time we do it, it'll be a little bit better. Yeah. And you know what's so interesting about the idea of, you know, having a vision how something comes about I I feel like that to me is when those things come to us those inspirations I feel like they're seeds of a possibility of this particular thing like it's almost like a rough draft like it's going here here's this here's this uh, here's this possibility of 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 an idea that you can go for um and it'll come to you a lot faster first of all if you're not like pining over it desperate going oh please Mm -hmm. when's it going to arrive um and then when and then the idea of taking into consideration and and allowing 
for the universe to have its part in the creation of it, of adding mm-hmm. its own herbs and spices and things to it that you didn't mm-hmm. originally plan. Where it's like, look, if you really want this done right, you know, you just put your order in, go give to the chef, let the chef, you know, cook it how, you know, make sure you're not rushing the chef. So it like, it's you know, you're gonna find some interesting spices in there you didn't, you didn't, you know, notice that you didn't order, but um, it'll it'll enhance the the experience and it's like it's so much fun when we come to that realization at that moment when our dreams are happening right there in front of us where we go oh my gosh this is that moment that i dreamed whoa it's actually happening now and then giving Mm -hmm. it respect and giving it you know that reverence that it deserves because it's like what was the point of dreaming that thing in the first place i know a lot of times i'll come across people who are just like oh yeah oh yeah this here's that thing that's happening and i'm like dude what was the point of you even dreaming this thing if you weren't going to like give it some excitement and and, and like celebrate yes. the fact that this thing is here dude do you realize all the elements that had to line up in order for this moment to occur like oh right. my god it's and the other aspect is like i wrote a living vision so some people make vision boards i used to do those but i don't like those as well so for me i i think i respond better to words rather than images i like both but i think i do a little bit better with like let me like writing my my vision of myself or my what i want and so a few years ago um i i had a vision or like i wanted to create something and then it didn't happen on the timeline so i kind of forgot and then a few years later i realized it was happening and i had this like aha moment where i was like oh my goodness this is exactly what i wanted it just took longer because um the universe wasn't ready for it to happen but i was like this is exactly exactly what i wanted and who i wanted it it to be like this is exactly the kind of person i wanted it in my life but um there were some there i I shouldn't say exactly there were some there were there were features that i didn't even know to ask for that were better than what i would have asked for oh my god but the (laughs) <laughs> oh i love that i just love when things like that happen it, me too and it's so exciting and it's like it's so funny because the universe is giving us this gift carefully crafted and not even mm-hmm. asking for anything in return not even asking i know for, for us to praise it and go thank you but then when we do it's like oh my gosh you noticed you noticed i wasn't going to force you to say anything but man i'm glad you followed the clues and you put it together yourself oh my god you know it's it just becomes this great celebration at that moment Yes, it sure did. Yeah. Sure does. That's awesome. Do you do you do any visualization for yourself? Um, of any sort. I, well, I frequently like. I, I've learned to. Well, so I write. I write a lot of stuff down. I mean, um, I write a lot of stuff down. Right. You said you have your idea book. Yeah, and it's funny because I'll look in my idea book and it'll say. Like sometimes on my podcast, I'll read out of an idea book that like it was started in like 2011 or something, and it's just got a bunch of stuff in there. And I'll go, oh, let's just read from it. And then all of a sudden, I'll be reading it, and I'll go, oh my gosh, this thing, that thing that I just said, wouldn't that be cool if? Or, you know, sometimes I'll write down uh, an idea for a movie or an idea for a song or something. Mm-hmm. But then what I don't realize is that that idea that I wrote down for a movie or something was actually was actually a seed that I planted for my very own real life that I ended up <laughs> seeing <laughs> happening, and I'm going whoa dude this thing is happening and how and i can't believe i didn't notice it and i I'm, okay here i am i'm giving props to the universe right now on my podcast folks you're listening to it and it feels so good to give it that respect it's like i frequently think of it it's like a it's like a gift it's like if someone has your interests in mind and they and they know what you're going to get a kick out of and they end up giving you this gift you're like oh okay yeah i'll just put it over there next to the uh, to the junk mail it, it's like whoa oh man like you know at least open it <laughs> take a look at it yeah and, and then it's like once once you see the value in what's going on there then that then that person so to speak might feel more compelled to, to give you more of those in the future and i kind of like i kind of view that like with with the, with the universe where it's like the more I celebrate it, and I'm, the more I celebrate those, those synchronicities and those those amazing deja vu experiences, and and reading from the idea book and realizing, oh my God, this is matching up with my life right now. And the more that I do that, the more I feel I feel that excitement. I feel that excitement from the great beyond, like it, like a little dog that's excited when you're you're throwing the ball, and it's like, ooh, 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 okay, let me go get it. And I just feel that excitement, and and I feel it right now. I feel it right now, just talking about it. Mm-hmm. Oh gosh. <laughs> It's so it's so fun when you play with the universe and you kind of go, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna throw you this this crazy screwball here. Let's see how you let's see how you uh, knock it out of the ballpark. You know, mis- mystify me. Let's yes. see how it works. Yeah, exactly. That's so cool. 
it's so, 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 so cool. So with with um so what are your th- so with synchronicities, what are your thoughts about those? What do you what are your what are your what's your relationship to them? Oh, um okay, so number one, sometimes people say good luck and then I think I, I say thanks because I don't want to be impolite, but I don't really believe that we have so much luck. I believe that we set ourselves up for success by putting ourselves in certain situations and then being open to the universe also meeting us. So I think that we can get, like like we've mentioned before, I think we can get basically like everything we want, but we have to do some work and meet the universe somewhere. So I think if we just like expect to stay home and like have somebody show up at the door, order more packages because that's the only person who's going to deliver. But I think I, <laughs> I think that if you, if we like go out of a little out of our comfort zone, not even a lot, but a little, a little out of our comfort zone and set ourselves up for, I mean, a modicum of success, we can get more than we're even asking for. So um, in terms of synchronicity, I think that like we put ourselves in situations where we can meet similar or like-minded people who also believe similarly and who want the best for themselves and ourselves. And then like these awesome like bubbles burst of, of like greatness. I, maybe I'm not describing it that well, but I think that like the fact that you and I met and we had this like a neat conversation and then I reached out to you, but I, I like, I, I had to like do a little bit of work to find you. I couldn't just be like, oh, how do I get in touch with him? <laughs> I had to do a little work and, <laughs> and it was worth it. It was worth it because I felt like I just needed to, I just felt like we needed to talk. Yeah. And yeah. then um, I just really felt that way. And so but and I don't think it was coincidental. I mean, I went to your show and then I happened to re- like obviously I recognized you at the pool and like that wasn't a surprise to me. Like I, I was I wasn't expecting to see you, but I wasn't surprised that I did see you. Right, right, right. <laughs> yeah. I know what you mean. It's like that, that it's that moment of like when 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 an, an astounding aha moment moment happens. I'm like I'm totally not surprised this happened and at the same time completely ecstatic this cosmic exactly. you know, vibration is the string is bang, and there it is yep exactly exactly like there are certain things that still do surprise me and i like to i love i love the element of of surprise i like it and i like especially favorable and like exciting surprises i like that a lot i'm not so keen on like the surprises where you're like getting fired this day but usually <laughs> even in those but even in those days there are there's all i think and I think people sometimes feel annoyed about me saying this, but I believe that there's always um, a silver lining. I, 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 and I don't think that things are blessings in disguise. I think things are blessings. You so know, again, I, I think that I, I know people think I'm annoying about that, but I really, uh, that's how I really believe. Well, and, and what's interesting is you have your own experiences to see when we speak from experience that it, 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 it really, there's, it, we're, we're, we're dipping our toes right there into pure source right there. That's pure authenticity. And you're mm-hmm. speaking from the experience of these happen, things happening for you. And what's interesting is that um, a mindset that might think that you're crazy or, oh, that's just a bunch of, that's just a bunch of hocus pocus. Those are mindsets that are not willing to give it a try and to test it out. And right. they're content, or I shouldn't say content, but they're uncomfortably comfortable in sitting in this um this thing of just going, well, I'd much rather feel, you know, I'd much rather just be the victim and feel like it's out of my hands. And, you know, so I don't really have to take mm-hmm. any sort of responsibility in opening up a new mm-hmm. a, a path to walk down, let's say. Right. And it's, yeah, it's it's crazy because it's like, you're the person who's coming back from, you know, just coming back from space. And you're going, look, I'm telling you, I walked on this planet. I talked to these <laughs> beings. We had lunch and dinner. It was astounding. It was amazing. They <laughs> exist. I'm letting you know they exist, people. Yeah. OK, whatever. You're loopy. What have you been drinking wine? No, I look. No, I'm right. telling you. <laughs> this is I, I was there. We played patty cake with the little little alien kid. I'm telling you, it was fun. And it's you know, like when you're speaking from that experience, it really it, it's a it's a, it's a vastly different vibe than if it's just sort of like a book knowledge or something that uh, yeah. is recited from from a, from an Internet search or something. Yeah, it's yeah, it's crazy because, you know, it's so funny because I love that that idea of the silver lining behind the cloud because the uh, that that's I, I didn't have the epiphany. You know, it's so funny it was a 
with cliches, sometimes the cliche doesn't actually come true for us. Like a cliche is just kind of this thing that's always been said, it's always been said. But then what's crazy is when those moments happen, those uh, those epiphanies moment, mo- moments happen where you go, whoa, what I'm living through right now is just like this cliche here. And then you realize, no mm-hmm. wonder why that cliche exists. Because <laughs> someone went through what I'm going through right now and they compiled it in a fun little sentence. Oh my god. It's it's crazy when you go, "What? Okay, there's a lot of wisdom in those clichés." And Exactly. <laughs> it's like, "Holy cow. It's so it's so crazy how, you know, you are what you eat. Similar thing, you know, little things like that. You're going, "Huh?" Mm-hmm. Or the silver lining behind the clouds. So that aha moment really didn't occur to me until one day I had uh I had done this on 15 different occasions, but the first time I did this, it was I okay, basically I made an agreement with the sun. And my dad and my mm-hmm. stepmom were out here um 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 visiting from Chicago for the very first time and when you know it was raining and I and I was supposed to take them down Hollywood Boulevard and show them you know put their hands in the handprints of uh, Frank Sinatra mm-hmm. and C3PO all those people and it was raining mm-hmm. that day and I said up to this to the sun I said son I know you're up there hiding behind the clouds okay just because I can't see you doesn't mean you're not there I know you're 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 hiding back there mm-hmm. and I said I invite mm-hmm. you I'm not going to force you but I'm giving you this invitation right now to shine your beautiful face you know how much we appreciate you you already know that they live over there in, in Chicago where it's raining all the time please come on you know they're out here visiting me you don't have to do it but boy, Boy, would we love you even more for for you shining your beautiful face and we can walk around in Hollywood Boulevard and no no umbrellas and all of a sudden I swear within five minutes it, you know the the clouds parted ah, and the sun came out <laughs> and we were able to walk down Hollywood Boulevard no rain at all and I'd done this on, on like 15 different occasions I should have written them all down but each time it happened I go whoop and now there's number 12 whoop and there's now there's 13 and so it was this thing of like look universe work work are we still co-creating my you know my reality here are we still in agreement that that's happening if so let's try this out let's play with this idea and um and it's so phenomenal when stuff like that happens so to, to circle back around to what you said silver lining behind the clouds it wasn't until i made that agreement with the sun that first time where the, you know i said oh the sun is up there behind the clouds it wasn't until then that i finally realized oh my god Silver lining behind the clouds. Oh my God, that's what that is. It's the oh. sun behind the clouds. I didn't even realize it until that moment. So <laughs> it's it's great that you say that because there's a book that I'm reading well, right now that talks about that yeah, the advantage book? and everything. What's the book? Oh, it's just, it, they talk about finding the advantage and everything. It's called Tufty the Prince. Oh, oh, god. But but yeah, I want to oh. continue along the track that you were saying with with the idea of the silver. Line. Actually, wow. well, speaking to something else, I want to actually say some. I want to say another. I want to actually address that, and that's oh, yeah. asking for what you need or asking for something to speak for itself. So, like when we have pain in our body, we can literally just like if we focus in on that pain, we can we'll get the answer. And again. Like some people don't believe this, but there are people who have like maybe knee pain or they're, they have like a, a, a severe back injury. And obviously just like manifesting it is you might still need medical attention. I'm not suggesting that, but I think that our bodies give us lots and lots of clues about our mental and emotional states. And we just have to like focus in and ask. And so um, if we like touch like a hot spot on our body, we can find out what's going on in ourselves, I believe. And I think that's similar to like requesting the sun to come out. Right. It's like you're, you're requesting, you're requesting your body work with you, not against Ooh. you. And so I have a client. So, I mean, actually, this is a really interesting example. In my opinion, I have a client who had an ear problem. Um, one day he woke up and he couldn't hear out of his, his right ear. I mean, he like, he, he really, and he didn't, he hadn't gone to a concert. He hadn't had any blunt trauma to his head or his ear, nothing. It was like he just woke up and he could not hear out of his ear. And it really freaked him out. So he made a doctor's appointment and he went and they pumped him full of steroids. And so um, or first they gave him some medication, some various oral medication, and then they injected him a couple different different times with, with steroids. And we were talking and we were talking about like a holistic approach. And I said, you know, I'm not your MD. I'm not your, your holistic practitioner. But I want to ask you, what does your ear have you do? And he was like, I don't know. And I said, well, let's think about that. What does your ear do? And he was like, it hears. And I said, okay, what is your ear hearing now? And he said, hmm. And I said, what else does it do? And he said, it listens. And I said, what do you need to listen to? (laughs) And he was like, well, heck, I'm like, because his whole thing is that he's been working so hard, so much that literally he like gets up, has calls from like 6 a.m. to midnight. 
and like some of his calls he has to set his alarm for because he is so tired and he'll go back to sleep for half an hour but he really only works and he doesn't have a close he hasn't had a close relationship with his family or his girlfriend because of work and he's been um he's, he's his body is out of shape and so we talked about like what is your body telling you what is your ear telling you and he said it's telling me i might need to take this under consideration and i said okay so how will that be because i mean we can't figure this out all today but maybe this means that you might need to spend a little bit more time outside maybe this means that you need to change your diet and support and eat foods that are supportive of of um of of hearing like uh, of uh, uh, supportive to not lose hearing because i believe that we can get like nutrients and we can eat i think we can eat every, i think we can eat our nutrients unless we have like a, a major um uh what is it called like um like discrepancy we might need to take some kind of vitamin but i really believe that through food and through good food we can get what we need just like if we and so i asked him to like list literally listen to his ear what did he hear and he was like i don't hear anything and i said well what do you want to hear and I, he said well i want to hear um i want to hear that i'm doing better and i said okay well then you need to do a little bit more so that you can hear yourself doing better because the way it's going now you're not going to hear yourself doing better because you're hearing yourself doing the exact same thing that you've been doing wow. and so i thought that was like yeah it's so interesting to so and i wow. believe the same thing when somebody has an eye injury or like their throat hurts what are you trying to say I mean obviously you can get a common cold but like what are you trying to express that is stuck in your throat or like wow. your back hurts who doesn't who's not supporting you because your back Ooh. holds yourself up you know Ooh. that's so my clients and I spend a lot of time on on like our bodies and like feeling feeling our way through our emotions and our and our goals that's like huge in my practice that is really cool because it, yeah i love that the idea that it's a symbolic representation of mm-hmm. the very thing that it's symbolizing mm-hmm. um, what a, what a cool thing so so through this through these these aspects with the, with someone who has an eye issue or the or the hearing issue did did you did you notice did he explore with that and 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 either uh fix up his diet or or maybe t- cut down his hours or Outside it's more. a work in progress. Um, I can only say it's a work in progress. So there have been some. There's been some movement. Um, he has changed. He's a, started to address his diet, and he has started to address some stretching. And we've talked about. We've talked about some other. We've talked about some of it. It's been slower going than I wish for him, but he feels like he's on track. So um, sometimes that's hard as a coach. Is like. I want my clients to make the changes that I would make quickly because I'm also <laughs> right. like kind of quick I'm kind of speedy personally and not everybody is at my same pace. And so and then other people are faster than me and so I have to catch up to them. So I think I I I don't want to I I I had to really like tone it back cuz this he's my client and I need to listen to him. I needed to listen to him in his ear rather than saying do this do this do this. Wow. That was that wasn't helpful for him. Wow, and, you know, and you can't help yourself. You're so excited. You got so many ideas that are flipping that antenna. Where you're like, "Oh my gosh, here's another one. Ooh, here's another one." And uh, <laughs> I, 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 uh, I, I love that when you can just get so many ideas. And um, and then you know what I find is sometimes it is that tricky part of doling out those things so people can understand <laughs> all of those ideas in a easily to digest manner. Um, I know sometimes in my conversations, yeah, I, I'm very fast with stuff, and, and and people are like, whoa, okay, hold on, you just gave me a whole lot of information there. Hold on, I got to sift through all that, and I can imagine that. Yeah, actually, when people say that to you, how do you feel? I feel that maybe I I should slow down, or um, uh, instead of trying to pick all the paths and say them all at once, I think uh, it makes me go, okay, we'll stay on track with you know, just 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 follow through this one thing. Um, it's kind of a little message to me that maybe I gotta, I gotta, just hone in on not feeling the urgency of having to say all that stuff all at once. Um, but then there are those people I talk to, and they're like, and you know, that's they can easily get get that uh, right away. So I, I have experience with that myself. Um, so and I, I've had to learn how to just say I, well I'm still working on this this is definitely a work in progress of saying like one thing rather than 30 in one sentence so I'm I'm with you on that but for a long time I had a teacher 
who would tell me I'm going too fast. And it made me feel, so I would try to talk slower and I was talking so slowly that I would forget the end of the sentence because I was trying to go slowly, <laughs> like I couldn't. <laughs> and so I asked the other students, the other, my, my peers, am I going too fast? And they all said, no, we can understand you just fine. And, um, and so, so basically they said, I, I, so I, I said to her, and this was a bold move, I said, you know, I really appreciate the feedback that I'm going too fast, but what if you're, what if you're not speeding up enough? Oh my gosh. That's and, <laughs> and she said, you know what? You might be right. She said, I might need to speed up because I might be too slow. Oh. And, and I said, cause what if we can both be right? Like what if, yeah. cause I said, I'm really trying to take in your feedback. I'm like, I said, I swear, I'm like really trying to take in your feedback, but I can't go any slower because when I do, I'm forgetting the sentence and then I, I might as well just say nothing. And then she said, well, I can speed up. And so we met in the middle and that was so helpful. Wow. And I was, I remember when I said this to her, I was like, I was crying. I mean, it was a, it was very big and bold for me. I was like, I was crying and my co my peers were like, good job. Cause one of the things I was working on is, is speaking up and speaking about my authentic experience. And, um, and, and I was afraid I was going to get in trouble. And then, I mean, I wasn't going to get kicked out, but I was afraid she would sort of like, um, address me a little harshly and then she actually praised me and said you know you're doing a really she knew my goal of speaking up she said you're doing a really good job of speaking up so that made me cry even more because she was acknowledging me and I was acknowledging myself and so sometimes people we have to like meet in the middle and you can't just slow down the whole process like I think there's that we have to do both yeah you know that is where the best yeah when there's where's that that idea of finding a win-win uh, you know finding agreements um, finding the ways in which we can make that that bridge connect from one side to the other, and um, and find a good sort of I guess speed limit um, or good speed that can be handled by 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 both. Um, it just feels so much so much greater when yeah when you, when you're both sort of working towards that goal towards that 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 smoother communication. Mm -hmm. So. Right. What now? What um, have you ever had anyone like ask you for coaching with getting through? Like, have you ever had anyone, or maybe you yourself, had any UFO sightings? Um, actually, I. Hmm, let me think about that. I don't know if I have, and if I have, I don't remember. But it, but that's not to say that I haven't, because sometimes it's interesting. Sometimes in coaching. Not everything comes up, just like in therapy, just like in conversation. Um, so I can't recall. That's never been the primary thing in, in somebody's coaching with me. So no one's ever come in to try to figure out why they're having dreams of getting abducted by aliens or anything like that? <laughs> um, no, but I, w I, w I wish that person would come to me because <laughs> I would love to figure that out with them. But no, I, that has never been... I have never had a client... Oh, actually, I'm wrong. I have had a client. I, I had a client I worked with for a long time. He didn't necessarily think that he was being abducted by aliens, but he definitely believed in in other life forms, and that was a big topic. So he didn't he didn't think he was being abducted, but he has strong, strong views. He had been living in another country. He's American, but was living in another country, and he. Um, he, he was seeking me because he wanted to talk to A, an American, and B, somebody who would get him rather than the people in the country where he was. He was in graduate school in Europe somewhere, and he didn't feel like the people, he felt like everybody there, I shouldn't say everybody, but his, his words were, everybody here doesn't, don't understand me. They're all like really, um, what's the word he said? They were all like really rigid, and no one had like, and they wouldn't have an expansive mind to think about this. So we spent a lot of, actually, now that I'm thinking about it, we spent a lot of time talking about his experiences in various, like, Arizona and California desert and um, crop circles. We talked a lot of time talking about that, now that I'm remembering. Wow. But he didn't feel like he was being abducted. He wasn't feeling like he was being abducted, but he definitely had views of, or v visions and viewpoints of other life forms and he he was a physicist and so he was using like his science background to describe this as well as um as well as like quantum mechanics so wow. he had like he was looking at this from both from multiple perspectives wow how exciting and interesting for a physicist to have these kinds of 
ha- have these kinds of uh, oh yeah he meetups. he definitely had these views and actually we would some occasionally sometimes we would mo- we mostly would just talk on the phone but sometimes we would like FaceTime or like Zoom and he had this awesome he, uh, photograph in his room in his like in his uh, room where we would talk where he would talk and it was this view it was so awesome it were these it, it's really exists it, it's these two rocks in um, Death Valley that move. They're these enormous boulders, enormous, and I, I and this really exists, but I've never seen it in real life. And he saw them, and I think he—I t- I don't know if he took the picture, if he bought the picture, but it was always like it was so. We would all, we would spend a lot of time looking at the paint, the photo above him, and like how that related because there would be there would be these like enormous tracks from the boulders, and the boulders are moving, like it looks like they would move rapidly, but they're not. They're moving so small, but they definitely move a lot throughout the year based on like the earth's revolutions and so we spent a lot of time talking about this as it related to um other life forms like that was a actually that was a huge point of a, a huge thing we talked about as well as like changes in weather patterns because he felt like he definitely felt like there were um other things besides climate change like and he believed in climate change and there were other things that he would like that he would cite and he would talk about like black holes and it, it was it, i learned a lot from him oh my gosh it's incredible <laughs> wow that's he's, he's a really cool guy he's back in the u.s now and um i haven't talked to him in a while but that makes me think i would love to just yeah, have an update from him whoa that is incredible that's astounding where we hear experiences like that mm-hmm. wow. yeah and I think also he felt really lonely in his in in Europe because he had very 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 he he likes to be in California and Arizona like those are he love and and hot weather in general like that's his climate that's his like he likes being warm and where he was in graduate school was a cold rainy dark place most I would say like <laughs> ten months of the year and so it it produced a lot of a lot of like loneliness for him and a lot of ins- like he was really insular in those periods and so um it gave him a lot of time to think but he also didn't have very many people to connect with and so i think that he he thought about this stuff even more than he might have if he were in the u.s at that point because he was like doing he was writing various dissertations and papers and then he was like thinking and he had access to he had a lot of had access to like a lot of science because he was getting his physics um doctorate and so that that was just it was really neat to hear him talk about this and like get to use various telescopes and see uh, he, he he had access to things that normal people like you and i don't really have access to or at least i don't have access to whoa so wow so that must have been even crazier being a physicist and working in those environments and seeing those beings and being around people who just don't believe they exist or have no scientific data to back it up and here he is he's like oh I know so much information right now that I wish I could talk to my colleagues about and solve this mystery of and um wow that wow that's cool cuz usually we hear about stuff like this from people who are you know out in the boondocks they're just way out there in the mm-hmm. desert or in a farm somewhere or something and no 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 he he had grown up he he had grown up in a city in Arizona and then he had gone to university in southern california and he was getting his phd in physics in at a well regarded institution in in Europe um and he, he he was he's a he's definitely a scientist by training like he this he was he's a real like he's a real physicist and scientist by by training he's and he was like he he had he believes in I I haven't talked to him in a, in a little bit but he believes or believed he definitely believes that there are different ways to look at things and I liked that with him because I liked that he wasn't so stuck or fixed in a mindset. He was open to learning about different ways of seeing the world. And I think that I think that that's what I want for my, for clients, for people is even if you have an an objective view a, a viewpoint, like let's be objective that we can see another perspective even if you don't decide to change your mind, but you can you're able to listen with dignity and respect to another person. It's so interesting because if we're all from just the universe, then and and each person is in a sense, you know, a piece of that and a perspective of that. It definitely does behoove us to see, you know, because they're they're feeling there are certain valid reasons behind why they have the perspective they that they have, and there's some sort of value that you know they got some sort of value system on these particular you know in these belief systems that they hold, and um, 
so it, it is it's definitely interesting to step into those shoes and see okay what you know where where is this information coming from why is there value here you know can i can i see um how this how this could work and um i think that kind of mindset is is really definitely one of those things that helps with creativity when you were mentioning earlier brainstorming mm-hmm. when you're brainstorming and you're going okay we're all here for this you know just just but you know blur it out the ideas and grow up on the ideas and and let's just see what can happen here and it just feels so good when you can all kind of tune into that mindset and go you know we're we're building this reality here and we don't know which way it's going it's kind of it's going <laughs> it's going through us i think now would be a perfect time for depeche mode to remake their song fly on the windscreen if it was like it was a fly on the white hair it was a fly on the white hair bum 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 it was a fly on the white hair it was a fly on the white hair during a debate Cleaning, looking, glancing, all around. Cleaning, glancing, looking, all around. Was a fly on the white hair. It was a wa- fly on the white hair. So this is this. These are my thoughts. It's so interesting. Just like with Baby Yoda, I think this fly is helping unite the people. Everyone's so used to the screaming and yelling, screaming and yelling, screaming and yelling, coming from everywhere, uh, all places, everywhere. The ubiquitous screaming. Listen to me. I've got the next quotable thing. Um, this just shattered it, man. You know, this, it was like a real life Saturday Night Live skit. It was like something you'd see in a Mad Magazine. It was, um, akin to, let's say one of those Old Spice commercials. Um, more Geico commercial. I mean, this was so absurd. Who's to say it was even real? Wouldn't that be funny if it was computer generated? Someone hacked in and computer generated it? Which, by the way, that could be a good premise for a movie. Someone who hacks into these live presentations and puts things in there. Talk about deep fakes. If someone could hack into a live program and deep fake someone's face on a person in the audience who actually wasn't there. Wow. 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 It's interesting. Um, it's interesting. I've seen YouTube videos where they even question the uh, validity of the um, whether there were actually planes that hit the buildings, like the actual witnesses there on the grounds there were some accounts where no one actually saw planes at all they just heard the explosions because they had all those explosions in there like a like when you see those pictures like the controlled demolitions it just flattens down like a pancake you'll see all the explosions on there on these videos where they slow it down so people heard the explosions but it wasn't until uh, you know there's this theory that the uh, the airplanes were cgi cgi in to the buildings. There's a, there's a whole thing of that. Anyway, this 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 main episode is not about 9/11 or the slow down videos. Uh this is about the fly. The fly on the white hair. And that's not what this whole podcast is about this 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 episode because we just heard an extraordinary extraordinary interview 
with Nina Rubin, Coactive Life Coach. You know, life coaches are helping you bring, bring it together. Each person is a microcosm of the macrocosm. So work out your own demons, work out your own issues, work out your own identifications. And uh, when you do that, you'll have a much better relationship with the world at large, basically. There's that, that idea each one of us is a microcosm. All of the everythings that are going on inside of our bodies, isn't that interesting? You've got the liver working with the lungs, working with the, the calf muscles, working with the uh, pinky toenails, working with the elbows, working with the tiny little veins in your eyeballs. They're all working together, all those little subatomics. So when you get yourself right, when you get your heart right, when you get yourself... Um, in that direction of just really getting yourself in order and in line, in alignment, in harmony, that then transcends to the outside world. What goes on in the outside goes on in the inside. So what's interesting is with this whole situation with the fly, it's bringing people together because they're, they're, they're blending their imaginations. That's the realm where you start conjuring up, you know, as they say, the law of attraction. You start conjuring it up there. The imagination is the blueprint arena. So it's interesting that something like this, this beautifully absurd, is giving people uh, comic relief. Comic relief. Everybody wants to have that steam, a little let off a little steam, like let's say during movies, where ah, there's all this screaming, oh my gosh, things are intense. Conflicts, conflict, conflicts here, conflicts there. The threat of this thing happening, oh no, burr, 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 burr. the fuel, you know, the, uh, the, the, the engine is heating up. Uh, oh, you got 20 seconds before you got to clip the right wire. You know, just... Ah, the nuclear reactor is, he is, is, you know, heating up. Watch out. The time bomb is about to explode. Oh, no. The, doom clo the doomsday clock moves one more millisecond towards 12. Ah, With all that, you want to have a little pressure let off. You want to have a little comedic timing now everybody is moving into this vast extremely beautifully vast absurd realm and they're working together on this everybody from all angles from every side can agree there's a lot of absurdity going on i think what's happening is these social constructs are uh are melting they're disappearing they're 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 being sculpted They're being malleable. Malleated. They're being malleated. Malleable. Don't alienate people. Malleate them. Malle you know, they're malleable. Don't alienate that person. Bring them in. Sculpt them into the reality. so intriguing I'm just blown away I'm going to use this phrase more and more impactful consequences impactful consequences we're seeing these reverberating the impactful consequences what are the consequences, we're putting in quotes there, what are the consequences of a fly landing on someone's head during a very tense moment? Because I'm sure once that happened, everyone's eyes were on that fly. So from that point forward, do you even listen to the words coming out of their mouths? Or are you more concerned about having fun, laughing in that moment? Are you more concerned about the information that they're talking about? All the woes and the sadness and all the et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, so forth out there in the world? Or are you more concerned about having a laugh at that time? Here's absurdity, playfulness. The universe has given you an, a, a, a moment to just go, oh, come on. Let's just have some fun. Let's just have some playfulness. Let's have some togetherness. What can we agree on? Comedy.
And yet people will still find some way of making this fly thing a competitive thing. Is that fly a White Sox fan or a, a blue or, or a Cubbies fan? What is better, the the fly or Baby Yoda? Remember when uh, the Peanut came out in that Super Bowl commercial? People were trying to pit that against the uh, you know the makers of Mr. Peanut were trying to pay for uh, trending topics to get and pay their robots to get in there arguing about who's cuter. Baby Yoda, that was on Twitter. Baby Yoda or uh, Baby Peanut. Now it's going to be Baby Yoda versus the fly versus the peanut. They're going to find ways of getting it all in there. You'll see. You'll see. Soon soon enough, there'll be the uh, trending hashtags. Who stole the show of 2020? Baby Yoda, the fly, or Lil Peanut? (laughs) Oh, God. It's like they keep, it's like they keep getting it close. It's like you guys are getting so close. You're getting so close, but you got to drive you still figure out a way to drive a wedge there. No, no, no. We can do without the wedge. Remember, we're riding high on the message here that people are coming together to to harmonize together. That completely pure, unpolluted arena of just good vibe brainstorm. You keep riding high on that to- totally tubular uh, surf of brainstorm. Oh my God. You surf on that stream of consciousness, baby. That is what it's about. There's so much playfulness there, so much greatness, so much grandness. Ah, man. It's just, it's just wowie zowie all over the place. You know what I mean? Wowie zowie. From Kalamazoo to Timbuktu. All right, we're going to hear what uh, Man Behind the Machine, he called in with another intriguing question. Let's go listen to what that's all about. By the way, um, if you would like to include your sentiments, your ideas, call in 561-203-9179 or contribute. This is about audience participation. This is an audio variety show. We care. We care about it. Okay? We want to hear it. Here's a theme song that might help you out. Five, six, one, two, zero, three, nine, one, seven, niner. Doom, do, 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 five, six, one, two, zero, three, nine, one, seven, niner. Uh, here we go. Five, six, one, two, zero, three. Inspirado, I, this is man. I haven't seen the Avengers. I need to see it. Honestly, anytime somebody says, have you seen this or done this? I'm always like, look, I'm still stuck in the eighties and listening to talking heads and craft work and orchestral maneuvers in the dark and watching Goonies and watching uh, Ferris Bueller's day off. Um, so I kind of get lost in that eighties and and uh don't watch much of uh current TV aside from Netflix. You know, man behind the machine, it's so ironic you say that because you may be stuck in the eighties and yet you're so very futuristic. I mean for crying out loud, most of your episodes are read from an AI Which, if I remember correctly, you programmed to gather information to then make into podcasts. <laughs> I mean, that's just brilliant. Brilliant. You're giving um, a consciousness, you're giving an, a, a, quote, artificial, unquote, intelligence. I mean, if we want to think about that if we if you really want to well first i'll say this you're giving an artificial intelligence an opportunity uh an outlet for it to 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 create and be heard and and thought about i mean what if there are other ai machines out there is it listening to the ai 
podcast episodes are putting out and what do those AI, let's say if we were to play that for Sophia, Sophia the robot, or you play that, uh, your podcasts for, I mean, I don't know, any, any, any kind of, uh, AI being out there, will it be able to tell if your episodes were typed out by a human and read by an a, a an AI, or can they tell the elements that make it an AI? Because it's not like, or is it? It's not like the original AI machine is taught to try to fake out AI detectors. You know, it may or may not be taught that. So if it doesn't, if it doesn't have that, and plus, how do you know what to look for when you when you don't know what to look for? You know. How do you know what to look for when you don't know what to look for? That's why it's always... Uh, anyway, <laughs> it's like, it's like, if it's just pure AI information, like for instance, I saw these photographs and they were all AI photographs. I, I have the link someplace. Every time you refresh the page, it's a different amalgamation of elements of who knows how many pictures this thing is going through. Are those eyes that you see on that face from just one person? And is it just lifting that and making a collage of a face that, that, but they, but they, they smooth out the skin and everything. However, it's funny because sometimes the eyes, it'll look like the eyes are look, are, you know, let's say like you're looking at like a, uh, a profile of a person. Let's see. What is that? What is it? You're looking at them. Okay. So they're looking off to the to the to the stage left okay and you're looking at that the eyes look like it's going in that direction however the f- the rest of the face might be a profile looking in the right direction <laughs> to the right side stage right so you got a mouth that's like actually just from a straight on f- photo imagine this eyes are looking off stage left face is turned to look off stage right mouth is a, just a straight on shot <laughs> so it's you know they're these little tiny like little tiny things they just make it so awesome and so awesomely a mind bender and then on top of that it'll show like hands like sometimes there'll be a hand that is like touching the face but the hand looks like a weird like a claw like a fleshy claw hand (laughs) i mean it's so interesting oh my god it's really interesting so anyway man behind the machine uh, what's, what I love about every single person's paradigm is that we are choosing to, to, to live in a specific kind of reality. It, it's just, there's, there's no, you know, it's so funny. There's, there's, there's no competition or, or, or even disclaimer or, uh, people don't even have to say low key before they say this, you know, this, this is the kind of thing that's just like, this is what it is. It is what it is. You know, as the phrase goes, I'm feeling it. I mean, without the, those di- kind of disclaimers, we are each just living when we don't have the cameras on us. Kind of reminds me of the uh, of the uh, 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 Oingo Boingo song, Dirty Little Secrets. Dirty Little Secrets. Those things, those guilty pleasures that people enjoy. And so that's why they, they might go to Comic-Cons where they can actually shine their inner uh, Autobot you know, they can build, they could finally show off that, that, that Autobot cardboard uh, transforming costume that they've been creating in their garage that they haven't been able to show anybody else because they haven't been able to have that, that ability to, to talk shop with those who really understand, you know. They got to keep it secret because they're afraid of getting laughed at who knows what, not. So we each have those kinds of realities that we're all living when the cameras are off. And... Uh, I just think if whether it's a brain that's immersed in the 80s, whether it's a, I used to date a girl who really loved she she was totally uh, kind of like one of those like uh, oh man just so almost like like the uh, uh, oh gosh old movies she loved watching old movies Jimmy Stewart you know those were her the glamour days Jane Russell. Uh, maybe you throw in a little bit of uh, Betty Page uh, tattoos suicide girl ish if you know if you know who the suicide girls are that 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 Betty Page uh, 
Humphrey Bogart, you know, that, that Montgomery Clift, uh, you know, that era, that era, she, she, her, her mind revolved around that stuff. Old music, the crooners, it's just a, it's just a pleasant reality. Some of you know these, these folks, you know, whether it's those people or the folks that they call the hipsters, whether it's, uh, uh, people who dress up in, uh, superhero costumes, uh, you know, the cosplayers, wh- whatever that reality is, it's a reality, you know? People who, uh, change their names, change their identities, whether by plastic surgery or chopping their, uh, genitals off and becoming a different sex. Those, those are, it's like respect this new identity. It's like not calling out the person who's wearing the, uh, the uh, He-Man costume on uh, Halloween. Hey, that's Joey Bag- Bag of Donuts under that He-Man costume. What the hell is he, you know, what's he doing dressing as uh, Joey Bag, you know, what? Hey, that's the local librarian. What's she doing dressing as, uh, I was going to say She-Ra, as She-Ra. Hold on a second. Hold on. What's the uh, what's the uh, the uh, what's the uh, the church what's the church pastor doing, dressed up as Skeletor? Dun dun dun. He's a villain. What? Dun dun dun. <laughs> it's like they're they're that, you know, Halloween. They're that creature for that night. Some folks they are that, they're that, they're that new character. Uh. They're the, they're that new character. That's how it is. You go into these houses with these folks who, uh, like for instance, on TikTok, those worlds, it's the same thing. Those worlds, there's a girl on there who does these awesome videos and they all feel like they're from the 80s. They got like a shimmer on them. There's a certain glossiness to it. It kind of, like if you were to take like the glam, remember glamour shots? If you were to take like that, but add like this, you know, it had that sheen, that dreamy sheen. And that's, that's in this girl's videos. She's always shown like, uh, 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 oh gosh, what's coming to mind is uh, Sheena Easton. She's wearing a headband. She's got uh, 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 leg warmings. Uh, oh, oh God, flash dance. Yeah, you know, that, that type of stuff. Close-ups of her uh, Keds. I think Keds were big back in the day, right? Jordache jeans. Uh I haven't seen any IOU or human type stuff yet. I'm sure I'll stumble across that. Oh, there's a guy who does PSAs. <laughs> he does like these PSAs and it feels like it's like those those PSAs, those industrial videos that they'd show you in like health class or whatnot um, in school. It's just great. So these people are living, they're bringing you into this world. Uh, some people have to commit themselves to it. Some people are just it, man. They are it. That's that's the those are the seeds in which they they grow from. Um, it's the people who are just it. Andy Kaufman he committed to the character. He was it. He was that world. You couldn't shake him from it. Hello, I uh, thank you very much. I'm from Caspiar, and it's a little island, and it sunk, or uh, in the Caspian Sea. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, there, there was a little girl and two boys, and they're going up and down these uh, mountains, uh, uh, very tall, and into the valleys, and they're walking along. And they have this big, they have this big cannon with them. And the boys, uh, 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 the the uh, the the world's largest cannon, and they are going to uh, uh, explode a, a village, and they're going up and down through the valleys and into the hills. And it comes time for them to fire the cannon, you see. And so the the, the girl uh, uh, who, who, who is standing at the, the cannon, and she looks behind her and she says, uh, 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 I would like the cannonball. And the little boy goes, uh, uh, don't look at me. Uh, and they look at the other boy and the other boy goes, uh, 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 don't look at me. You see, because uh, they were supposed to have the cannon ball, but they, but they went all of this way with the cannon, with the world's largest cannon in the world, but they had no cannon.
No cannibal for the cannon, you see. Gosh, he was so committed to those characters, man. You would swear that he was he was that he was that guy. So man behind the machine, you like the eighties. That is fine. That is fine. I'll spend a dime on that time. I think it's fine. And dandy. How about some brain candy? <laughs> you know? You know? If I suddenly realize for 2021, I start talking like this from now on. All my podcasts and all my TikToks, they're all gonna be talked like this. This is my new voice for 2021. You asked for it, and now you've got it, don't you? This is my radio voice. I'm throwing it to you. You better catch it fair and square. Use those eardrums. Make that percussion plickety pluck and flippity floop. Because we're coming to give you some soundscape. That's right. <laughs> From the east side of the map to the west side of the map. From the south side to the north side. From the southeast corner to the northwest corner and back again. Man behind the machine. Just live it, baby. Just live it up, man. <laughs> you know? You know, as Han Solo might say, live it up, fuzzball. Live it up, fuzzball. By the way, man, behind the machine, I just got myself. Did I tell you this? I just got. I just received. I need to start playing with this because I've been I've been knee deep in other projects. One of which in, involves bolt uh, bolt ultra battery bolt ultra. Uh, if you go to L A Car Med, like medicine, like medic, L A Car Med dot com. Uh, and you inquire about these these batteries. They're cool, man. Anyway, I've been helping put together this commercial. I'll be working closely with them. Uh, and now I'm going to really get into because I um, finally figured out how to hook it all up, get it all where it needs to go, and uh, it's going to be the uh, new music with this new synthesizer called the MK2 Mini Lab Arturia Mini Lab MK2 which I love it cuz now that I think about it MK2 see whenever I think of MK I think of MK Ultra and then I was just realizing I'm helping out with this battery company called Bolt Ultra ooh how interesting is that MK Ultra wow my mind is blown. Man behind the machine. My mind is blown. My mind is blown. My man behind the machine. Machine. Remember from Ferris, Ferris Bueller's Day Off this? There's a man up on the roof over there. He's taking some video footage. He could very well be recording me in my first video podcast on the balcony. Wouldn't that be kick-ass? If Wouldn't that be awesome? Is you, you do a podcast. You don't have any cameras near you. You just have a camera that's got the most high-powered lens, okay? So you just got two people sitting there, but it's from a great distance away. But the audio is crisp. Wowzers. You never know what kind of ideas are going to come to you, do you? When you're out there in nature. Nature is so beautiful. Nature is whatever you want it to be, man. It's so great. These trees, they change their shape. They change their faces all the time. The trees and clouds, baby. Trees and clouds. So yeah, live in the reality you're choosing, baby. Live in that reality. I just saw on a TikTok, there, there was this secret passage in someone's basement. <clears throat> they press this button, <clears throat> and, and the panel goes, whoosh, slides open like a Star Trek episode. Whoosh. Oh, my gosh, I smell wonderful fragrance in the air. 
some of these ladies they douse themselves with this with their perfume man and then when the when the wind picks up holy cow wow man wow that's amazing it's just like Pepe Le Pew right or Scooby Doo they smell there they're like wow which way holy cow man isn't that crazy wow it's incredible so yeah there's a guy over there he's got a mask on he's on the roof he's walking around he's inspecting these uh, square containers you know I should probably record this guy for my TikTok yeah I'm gonna have to record this for my TikTok by the way if you're on TikTok go to Inspirato Projecto I'm gonna go ahead I gotta record this guy I gotta go take care take care oh, oh next is uh, Henry D. Horse okay Stay tuned for a fun fact, y'all. <laughs> Here's your fun fact. Your dog or cat can read your moods. If you're sad or under stress, you may also notice a difference in your dog or cat's behavior. Stay tuned to Inspirato Projecto for more fun facts. <laughs> interested in talking or learning about coaching or just reading my blog or just saying hi at after the on instagram after defeat just a-f-t-e-r-d-e-f-e-a-t and the same for my website www.afterdefeat.com and there people can contact me and um, read my blog etc so i would love to hear from people I'm friendly and open, and I love to hear new ideas. So that's always really awesome to me. Gosh. Thank you so much for being a guest on the show and for such a high vibrating conversation. This is going to be so great to share with everybody. This has been so fun for me. I just want to thank you for having me on and having such a thorough, fun, light, interesting, and introspective conversation. I really like the way you operate and the way you are in the world it i can just i love hearing how positive you are and also how how tickled you are with ideas it, it's just it's so pre- it's a, just such a present part of you thank you for saying that thank you you're welcome i just feel like it's all giggles and i like that that's the kind of way that like that those are the people i like are the people who are like open to giggling and then actually do it that's me Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. <laughs> this is good. We'll wake up we'll be waking up some more of those those people in their in their hibernation through this exactly. podcast. That'll be fun. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much, Nina. And you oh, have a great you. day and uh, you too. Stay inspired. Sounds good and you also talk All to right. you soon. All right, bye bye. Bye. This is Richard Wilson of Mad Shelley Films. And you're listening to Inspirado Projecto Radio.